It is about time that I make my Star Wars tier list, and I've got to say, I probably have some hot takes. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be ranking all of the Star Wars movies and all of the Star Wars shows. Now, Star Wars was like my first love, so I think it's about time that I actually do this. I mean, if you can't tell from behind me, I've got a... Uh, Got this right here. I've got my Anakin Revenge of the Sith still in its box, as well as Obi-Wan, of course. And honestly, probably too many other things that I'm not even gonna bring out. Look, before we get started, let me know down below your guys' ranking of the Star Wars movies and shows. I really am curious to hear what you guys have to say. And with that being said, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and join us on the road to 400 subscribers. We're getting so close. It's free. But anyways, let's just get right into this. Okay, so first up on the list, we've got Star Wars A New Hope. Now this is the original movie, but I have to say I'm giving this movie the rank of Jedi Knight. I'm putting it pretty much in the middle because yeah, it is the original, but when I go back and watch Star Wars, this isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. It's good, it laid the groundwork. If it wasn't for A New Hope, where would Star Wars be? Nowhere. It's definitely got some amazing moments like the duel between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader and the whole flight scene at the end. But I don't think this is the movie that really set Star Wars up to be what it is today. Now this next one, Attack of the Clones, I grew up with the prequels. Revenge of the Sith was the first movie that I remember seeing in a movie theater, so I am a prequel guy. But Attack of the Clones, as much as it holds a special place in my heart because of all of the cool scenes and stuff, I think I might actually have to give Attack of the Clones the rank of Padawan. Look, it's got some amazing scenes. I love the part where they're in the gladiator ring on Geonosis. I thought that was amazing and I still love watching it to this day. And especially all of the stuff on Kamino. This is where all the clones were born. This is everything that sets up the Clone Wars. And the duels here with Count Dooku, Yoda, Anakin, and Obi-Wan at the end just were so amazing. But with that being said, it's this low on the list because of just everything else. It's kind of a hodgepodge movie. I still love it to death. The dialogue is definitely very clunky and actually comedic at times, but this is where we really see Anakin transition into these sort of darker tones that he leads into with Revenge of the Sith. Again, I'm putting it low, but I love all of these movies, so even if it is low, I'm not necessarily calling it bad, even though there are some, uh, some questionable things on here. Up next, we have Star Wars Rebels, and dude, let me just tell you, I consider Star Wars Rebels to occasionally be better than a lot of the Clone Wars. And for that, I'm putting Star Wars Rebels in... Honestly, yeah, I would watch it over A New Hope, so I'm giving it the rank of Jedi Master. Rebels just is so amazing. You have those first couple episodes in season one as a whole, which is sort of childlike, but Star Wars is made for kids, and even as a teenager watching this, I really enjoyed it. Two main episodes come to mind, Twin Sons with Darth Maul and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and the episode where Ahsoka tries to break through to Anakin with Ezra there. Those two episodes are absolutely incredible, and if you haven't seen Rebels, you need to watch it because Ahsoka is going to lean heavily on it. And also Chopper is actually a menace and he kills so many stormtroopers. This is not a TV show made just for kids. We get the introduction of the world between worlds. We get so many different things that we now consider mainline canon in Star Wars that all stemmed from this series. Another episode I don't want to forget about is the episode with Kanan Jarrus and his whole thing. I'm not going to spoil anything that happens, but it's a really a must watch. Okay, as I said earlier, there isn't anything bad in Star Wars, but I am immediately taking Star Wars Resistance and putting it in the youngling rank because um, I just haven't seen it. And honestly, I don't care to see it. I see BB-8 on the cover, I see some X-Wings, but like, am I missing anything? From what I've heard, it's just like, you can miss it, it's fine, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Will I watch it one day? Maybe, but I just have no sort of motivation to do so. So we're going to move on to the next one. Now, hot take here. I think Return of the Jedi is, in fact, the best of the original trilogy. And, you know, where am I going to put this? I think it's way better than A New Hope, but, you know, no, I have to. Yeah, I'm going to put this in council member. I got the Lego Jabba's sail barge for Christmas one year, and ever since then, this whole scene at the beginning of the movie has just been so iconic. And actually, Bib Fortuna terrified me as a kid when they first walk up. Not only that, but we get some amazing moments just with Endor. We meet the Ewoks for the first time. And it sort of has a different feel than the first two. We get Yoda passing away, and of course the amazing scene at the very end with the Emperor. This is the first time we get to see the Emperor in his full sort of malicious state. We get to see him use the Force Lightning. We get to see how he took Darth Vader and manipulated him and now how they're trying to manipulate Luke. But Luke is the hero who saves his own father from evil. I actually just love watching this movie and I think it's severely underrated. Look, for this next one, I don't have to say anything. 
right in Grandmaster. Uh, this is actually my favorite movie of all time, hands down, period, no questions asked. There is something so, so timeless about the story of Revenge of the Sith, and I feel like you really can watch it on its own without any other Star Wars knowledge. This is the turn of Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader. This is the moment the Empire takes control over the galaxy. The fall of the Jedi Order, Order 66, a complete political flip in the entire galaxy. The action is top notch. We have the fight with Count Dooku and the Jedi Starfighters at the very beginning of the movie. We also get General Grievous, Yoda fights Palpatine, and of course the greatest cinematic duel in history, which is between Obi-Wan and Anakin on Mustafar. I could watch this movie a hundred times over and it is 100% my desert island movie that I would take above everyone else. And also just the themes that this movie presents are super relatable and super heavy. What are you willing to do for the ones you love? What sacrifices are you going to make before you lose yourself? It's just really powerful and the emotional, political, and just general themes of this movie hold up today so well. People say Anakin's turn to the dark side is really sort of rushed, but dude, I don't think so at all. We see what happens in Attack of the Clones at the end where he kills the same people. And in Revenge of the Sith, we see him thinking about all the things going on and he realizes what he has to do. If you don't think that this is the greatest Star Wars movie, you can fight me. Let me know down below. Up next is Rogue One and man, this was such a breath of fresh air. I don't know where I'm going to put this. Let me think. Honestly, I might give this the rank of Master, but behind Rebels. Rogue One did the impossible task of giving us Star Wars without Jedi as the main characters. I mean, think about it, the Rebels were the main characters in the Star Wars movies, but we really went to the movie theater to see the lightsabers and the Force and sort of the mythicism of all of that. But Rogue One gave us a backstory on how the Death Star was built and interwove it with the events that lead into the original trilogy. And we cannot forget about the amazing Darth Vader scene at the very end in the hallway. And I just learned recently that Dave Filoni is the reason for this scene happening. And once again, God bless and praise Dave Filoni. We got a whole new cast of characters, and while most of them don't make it out, we are now watching a show called Andor based on a character that was in this movie. I think this is fantastic, and this is one of the movies that I will just throw on the TV from time to time, because it's just such an easy watch and tells such a good story. And it's just beautifully shot. Next we have Solo. Now this is a weird one because I've actually only seen Solo twice or three times, and I don't know really how to feel about it because it kind of stands off in its own. Now, I definitely didn't hate it as much as some people did. I thought it was actually a pretty fun movie. And for this, I'm actually gonna put it behind A New Hope in the Jedi Knight category. I thought the acting for Han Solo, Kira, Chewbacca, everybody who was involved in this movie was fantastic. And I, I really just don't understand the hate that this movie gets. If you guys don't like this movie, let me know down below why. I really am curious. I hope they bring the sort of themes and lore from this movie back someday with the syndicate and Maul returning because that was such a good cliffhanger seeing Maul run the syndicate and we don't really know what he's been doing up until Rebels. So yeah, I'd put it sort of in the middle. I would throw it on, but I would definitely watch A New Hope over Solo. But also, I think it's better than some of these movies that are coming up. Now look, this is the Clone Wars movie, and this was actually my first introduction into the Clone Wars. I watched this first, and it's definitely going in the bottom of Padawan. And yeah, this is sort of essential viewing because we meet Ahsoka, but I think you can pass as long as you know Ahsoka is Anakin's Padawan. Which leads me to the next one, Star Wars The Clone Wars. You're getting the rank of, mm, oh, I can't decide. It's going to either be Grandmaster or Council Member. Let me look at what else do I have. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm putting Clone Wars in the bottom of Grandmaster. Honestly, a lot of it has to do with how they took the Clone Wars and amplified the prequels to be even better. Season seven of the Clone Wars is fantastic. And I think IMDB ranks some of those episodes as the greatest TV show episodes of all time. Victory and Death, the soundtrack, Oh my God, I get tears in my eyes every time I listen to it. And this show is responsible for so much that we love about Star Wars today. We have Ahsoka, we get the clones, and it inspired so much of the extended lore, video games, books, everything else. What this show did for Star Wars was somewhat of a miracle. And again, thank you, Dave Filoni. Now we have The Empire Strikes Back, and I think that this is majority of people's favorite Star Wars movie, but I, you know what, I, I hate to do this. Actually, I don't hate to do this. This is my tier list. Remember, this is my opinion. So I'm putting Empire Strikes Back below Return of the Jedi and Council Member. Look, this is still a very, very high rank. I'm just saying, me personally, I enjoy Return of the Jedi more than Empire Strikes Back. Does Empire Strikes Back serve as a great medium middle movie? 
Absolutely. Is it better than the original? 100%. The scenes with Boba Fett, Darth Vader, Cloud City, they're all incredible and this is the film where we find out Darth Vader is Luke's father. What a twist. I'm just saying that I really enjoyed the ending Return of the Jedi more than this. And it's not to say that it's better, it's just my opinion. Hoth is also amazing. At the beginning of this movie, we get the AT-AT walkers for the first time and they're super iconic. And of course, we meet Yoda. I think Dagobah is probably my favorite part of this movie. Just the whole training sequence and finding out who Yoda is was just really cool. Again, I grew up with the prequel trilogy, not the original trilogy, so these movies, they mean a lot to me, but I think I'm more of a prequel fanboy because, well, I grew up with them. Now, speaking about growing up with movies, I was a sophomore in high school when The Force Awakens came out, so I feel like I had a pretty level head about what I was watching, but I don't know if this movie aged as well with time. I think it definitely aged better than the other sequel trilogy movies, and I do think it is the best one out of the three, but it definitely has its issues. This movie is essentially a copy and paste of A New Hope. And for that, I'm going to put it right behind New Hope in Jedi Knight. One thing the sequel trilogy 100% missed out on was making Finn a Jedi. Could you imagine the story of a stormtrooper, someone who is at the bottom of the ranks of the bad guys, turning to be one of the greatest of the good guys? I mean, come on. Imagine a story where Finn, turning from bad to good, and having Rey, who was supposed to be good, turning to the dark side, and them having to fight each other. I'm telling you, man, I should have written this. It was a good setup, but the more you look at it, this movie is 100% just a copy and paste of A New Hope. Starts on a farm planet, young person looking to leave the planet, wants to find out who they are, an old person tells them, oh, you have so much to learn. Giant star killer base is the same thing as the Death Star, they blow it up at the end. There's a lot, there's a whole bunch of videos out there that explain the similarities and it's actually quite shocking. Another controversial one, The Last Jedi. Now when this first came out, I loved this movie and I think I saw it twice in theaters. But this movie has not aged as well with me. Is it a good movie? Yes. Is it really true to the Star Wars characters that are in the movie? I don't think so. I still think it's a good watch and I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it is, but I definitely still disagree greatly with some of the choices they made. I do say I would watch this over Rogue One. Mm, I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm really going to put this right below Attack of the Clones because I can see myself watching all of these other things before The Last Jedi. It's got some fantastic moments. I just don't like what they did with Luke. Luke at the end of Return of the Jedi, saving his own father, abandoning all evil, showing evil right to its face that you have lost. And now in, you know, just a couple years later, he just gave up on this one kid because he thought he might be bad. I just don't agree with it. Cinematography, fantastic. I love the space scenes and I love that one shot where the ship goes through all the others when it's going into hyperspeed. But I don't think that's enough to warrant a good movie. You've got to have a good story. You've got to do the characters justice. And it's Star Wars for crying out loud. So you have a lot riding on it. Up next, we have The Mandalorian, and season one and two of The Mandalorian were absolutely fantastic, and season three kind of tapered it off a little bit for me, so I think I'm going to put The Mandalorian at this moment right below Rebels. It's so fun to just sit down and watch this series, and it's very easy to follow if you're new to Star Wars, and the introduction of baby Yoda Grogu is just such a crazy addition to the Star Wars universe and it really is what Disney needed to do to amplify Star Wars to bring it back and to introduce something familiar but new and just getting the return of Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, Boba Fett those scenes are amazing and I just remember watching them super vividly way more so than watching The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. The show is amazing and I really hope that they bring it back super strong for season four I know they can get back to the level that they were for season two because I mean even that Luke scene alone of him returning at the end of season two is enough to warrant a very very high spot and look i know that these things are up here but this is the rank of jedi master so that's a pretty high honor up next is the phantom menace the first in the prequel trilogy now this is a weird one i find myself watching this movie way more often than i thought i would and still to this day i try to figure out the plot of the separatists in the galactic republic and sometimes it still just goes right over my head because look i'm in this movie to see qui-gon obi-wan darth maul and anakin I feel like the more I watch this movie, the more I appreciate it. And I think the fans who saw this in 2001 really didn't like it, but now understand its importance. But I grew up with these. So these were the first Star Wars movies I watched. And I think that really shows that this movie did something for me and my generation. With that being said, I think I'm going to put this movie above A New Hope and Jedi Knight. Some people might think that's blasphemy to have The Phantom Menace over A New Hope. But seriously, I will put that on over A New Hope at least most of the time. I mean, Duel of the Fates, do I have to say anything else? 
Now, this is the last thing up here, but it's not the last, you know, show because we have Andor and Kenobi to put up here. But when I saw The Rise of Skywalker, I just thought, okay, it was fine. And then I waited a couple weeks and realized, oh dear, what was that? Look, I'm going to put it here first and then I'm going to talk about it. It's going at the top of Youngling solely for the reason I have not seen Resistance. Were there some cool ideas in this movie? Sure. I thought the scene at the end where Rey has all the Jedi summon her with the voices, if they would have just had them actually present as force ghosts, it would have made it so much better because then you would have all the spirit of the Jedi fighting all of the evil. And do I even need to say it? Somehow Palpatine returned. Wow, great writing, fantastic. Oh, and don't bother explaining why the greatest villain in cinematic history just returns out of nowhere. Yeah, just say he returns. People are going to eat that up. They'll love it. Newsflash, we did it. This movie tried to just correct what The Last Jedi did wrong, and I think just compensating for that doesn't make it necessarily good. I think The Last Jedi is a better movie than Rise of Skywalker, but I think the only reason it is is because that movie just wanted to correct what The Last Jedi did. They had such an opportunity with the sequel trilogy and I think they just missed the mark and I'm hoping with this new movie with Rey set 15 years after the rise of Skywalker really explains it. Because this whole movie is about Palpatine returning and him controlling everything, but they don't explain anything. You have to read books, you're gonna have to watch The Mandalorian which is doing a better job of doing that and it's not even a movie. Look, I know where it's leading to and I know why they did the things they did, but actually, when you think about it, they didn't have a plan for these movies at all. This has nothing to do with the actors. I thought the actors were fantastic in the sequel trilogy. I just thought the writing needs some work. Now, it's not up here, but I'm going to put Obi-Wan Kenobi, the TV show, in the rank of Jedi Knight at the top. I was so excited for this series. Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi coming back, hashing out their beef, really getting super emotional with Obi-Wan having to live on Tatooine by himself for so long dealing with a PTSD, but we didn't really get that. Sure, we got it in the first couple episodes with sort of a flashback, but other than that, this was a story about an Inquisitor who didn't know if she was bad or good. Again, not the actors. The actors were fantastic. I just don't understand why you have a show called Obi-Wan Kenobi when majority of the show is about this Inquisitor and Leia being protected. And that one episode at the end where Obi-Wan and Vader fight was fantastic. I also love the episode before that where we see Reva get stabbed by the lightsaber and we see Darth Vader go crazy on Reva, pulling the ship down and everything. Because this series did have amazing moments, I just don't think it stuck the landing as much as it should have being the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. You have Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen back and... You know, you expect nothing else but perfection, which I guess is my own fault for setting super high expectations. I liked it, but I definitely thought it could be a ton better. And just some of the inconsistencies and weirdness of the plot, like, oh yeah, Obi-Wan's gonna shield Leia with his little coat, no one's gonna see that. Even the actress who played little Leia said how ridiculous that was. For a Star Wars show, it just didn't feel Star Wars-y. Love the actors, love the performances, loved parts of it, but the series as a whole, I feel like could have been better. Now, speaking of that, I wanna talk about Andor. Andor goes at the bottom of Jedi Master right after Rogue One. Andor tells a super grounded story about Star Wars without having to delve too much into the Star Wars world, which I did miss some of that, and I thought that was something that it could really improve on for season two, but we get a character study about Andor, about Kino Loy. We just get great character studies with all of these new faces we haven't seen, and especially the familiar ones like Mon Mothma. We're getting a drama for Star Wars that isn't necessarily super action-packed, but it's a slow burn that when the action does pay off and we see these massive battles, they are incredible. I think the pacing could definitely be picked up for season two, but as it is right now, I actually loved this series. And I don't know why people weren't talking about it as much. Now, we can't forget The Bad Batch. Bad Batch just ended its season two, and I think I'll put The Bad Batch right after Solo in the Jedi Knight category. It's good. Season two was definitely better than season one, especially those last two episodes, and I still need to make a review on it. But I feel like this could be a Clone Wars situation where they're making more and more, and at the end, we're really going to realize that we had something special here. I can't wait to see more of this. I can't wait to see just more Star Wars, and I'm sure when Ahsoka comes out, pretty, pretty please let this be a Grandmaster project, because there's rumors that we're going to see Hayden Christensen back in some sort of flashback, and Ahsoka is like one of my favorite characters in Star Wars, so I really don't think that they're going to mess it up, but I also just want to knock on wood because God forbid they mess this up. Anyways, that's my rank of the Star Wars movies and TV shows. Please let me know what you guys think down below and give me your rank. Again, hit that subscribe button on your way out and I will see you all very soon.